Due to the inclement weather, I am celebrating Holy Mass, but I had asked because of the, the concern for the health and safety of our congregation that um, our parishioners stay at home. Um, we will be recording today's Holy Mass that will be um, rebroadcast um, a little bit later in the week. So let us begin. To thee we come, O Lord, our God, before thine altar, Father, thou knowest best our yearning hearts. This supplication answer. Lift up from want thy people, Lord. Bless us, O God. O Father, bless our toil. Under thy cross, we stand prepared to serve thee with devotion. Be hid with sweat of blood or tears or humble resignation. For we thy people are, O Lord. Save us, O God. O Father, bless our toil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I will go unto the altar of God, to God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God, and prepare ourselves, that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now let us pause and make an examination of our conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, let us recite the second act of confession. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us, our sins and bring us unto everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us, and your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. After Jesus was baptized, he came up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened for him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. He shows pity to the needy and the poor, and saves the lives of the poor. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. Almighty God, you manifested the glorious divinity of your Son, Jesus, at his baptism in the River Jordan. May the brightness of his presence shine in our hearts and may his glory be set forth in our lives. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench. Until he establishes justice on the earth, the coastlands will wait for his teaching. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring the prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon, those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual. <clears throat> he shall judge between the nations and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another nor shall they train for war again. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites, as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. What has happened all over Judea? Beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The sea beheld and fled, the Jordan turned back, the mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs of the flock. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, Cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, 
that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Praise be to you, Lord. The people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water. But one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. After all the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove and a voice came from heaven you are my beloved son with you i am well pleased the gospel of the lord praise be to you lord jesus christ May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Niech będzie pochwalony Jezus Chrystus na wieki wieków. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Today, throughout Christendom, Many Christian denominations celebrate the solemnity of the baptism of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This event in the life of Jesus was so important that all four evangelists recorded this event. For it marked not only the anointing of God <clears throat> to his only begotten Son and the descent of the Holy Spirit, it also marked the beginning of the public ministry of Jesus. During the season of Advent, we read of the message of John the Baptist and his call to repentance, to prepare the way of the Lord. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 11, we hear John speak I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Those who came to be baptized by John in the River Jordan recognized this call and they confessed their sins and they accepted God's forgiveness. But Jesus, as John spoke, was to baptize in the Holy Spirit, thus drawing man into a spiritual communion with him. In Luke chapter 3, verse 23, we learn that Jesus was about 30 years of age when he began his ministry. It is believed that at 30 years of age, one was physically and mentally mature. It was an age when one was ready for leadership. It was an age that one was no longer a child, but rather an adult. It was an age when one became a man or a woman. 
In the Holy Bible, we read about the age of 30. David became king when he was 30 years old. Before that, he was a mere shepherd before his anointing. And we read in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 4, David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. Ezekiel, the prophet, was called by God at age 30. We read in Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1, Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Chebar, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. In Judaism, it is believed that the priest entered their service at age 30. We read in the Old Testament book of Numbers, chapter 4, verse 3, from 30 years old and upward, even until 50 years old, all that entered into the host to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. John the Baptist was 30 years of age when he came out of the wilderness to pave the way for the Messiah. We know that John was roughly 30 years of age because the Bible says he was born six months before Jesus and Jesus started his ministry at age 30. Jesus officially started his ministry at age 30. Before this time, he worked as a carpenter and grew in stature, wisdom, and favor with God and man. We read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verse 23. Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. He was the son, so it was thought, of Joseph. My brothers and sisters, at the baptism of Jesus, we see the manifestation of the Blessed Trinity. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 9 through 11, we read, In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens open and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, Thou art my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. In all four Gospel accounts, John the Baptist witnessed the Spirit of God descending upon Jesus in the form of a dove. In Palestine, the dove was a sacred bird. A dove was not hunted nor eaten. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, we read that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The rabbis used to say that the Spirit of God moved and fluttered like a dove, breathing order into God's creation. In Genesis 8, we read of Noah sending out a dove three times following the great flood. And the last time, the dove did not return indicating that the flood waters had receded enough to support life. The word dove is mentioned in Holy Scripture 47 times. The dove in the New Testament represents the Holy Spirit that also indwells in every believer after they have repented and called upon Jesus Christ to be their personal Savior and come into their lives. Jesus was to announce prior to his passion of another helper, an advocate. 
The essence of the Holy Spirit was to be revealed to the apostles, his first chosen at the Last Supper. At his ascension, Jesus calls upon his believers to wait in Jerusalem and who spoke about the Holy Spirit that was to baptize those who had gathered at the Feast of the Pentecost. In the Nicene Creed, all baptized Christians profess, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. The Spirit of God is also known in Hebrew as the Ruach, or the very breath of God, that gives life not only to the world, but to everyone who is reborn. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, we read, Then the Lord formed man out of dust from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Baptism, my brothers and sisters, marks the beginning in the life of an individual as a true believer and a disciple of Christ. For it was Jesus who was to proclaim to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verse 5, Truly, truly, Jesus said, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And so, on this, the solemnity of the baptism of our Lord and Savior, we believe and we hold fast in our faith that the rite of baptism is a sacrament and it is linked with the sacrament of confirmation, which according to our faith completes the baptism as proclaimed by the words of Jesus the Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, according in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. Are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life.
Receive, Father, almighty and eternal God, this immaculate host which I, your worthy servant, offer to you, my living and true God, for my countless offenses and omissions for all present here, for our nation, as well as for all faithful Christians living and dead, and for all humanity, may be for us a means to salvation and everlasting life. Amen. Lord God, you endued us with great dignity and worthiness through Jesus Christ. You exalted, renewed, and sanctified us. Through the mingling of this wine and water, may we worthily partake of this holy oblation in which our Savior gives himself as food for the world and in deepest truth unites himself with us. We offer you, Lord, the cup of salvation. In your mercy, look upon your faithful people and accept this oblation of praise, petition, and adoration for our salvation and for that of the whole world. Lord, receive us, who bow before you in contrition and humility, and grant that this sacrifice be so offered in your sight as to be pleasing to you, Lord God. Come, sanctifier, almighty, eternal God, and bless this sacrifice, prepared for the glory of your holy name. I wash my hands in innocence and go about your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Sweep me not away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, men in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great congregation, I will bless the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memories we honor here on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord receive the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and for that of his holy church. Please be seated. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, you presented your beloved Son to the world at the River Jordan. May we who bring you these offerings, may we now walk in the newness of life. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God. Forever and ever, Amen. the Lord be with you. And also you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. As Jesus was baptized by John in the river Jordan, you opened the sky and sent 
your anointing spirit as a dove. You announce from heaven that Jesus is your son in whom you are well pleased. With this baptism, Jesus began his public ministry, announcing to the world the good news of salvation. Through our own baptism, our lives are joined in him, Christ. So may we live as your children and servants of your whole kingdom. Therefore, we he join this day with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church. And we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, in our prayers today. Let us pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. Let us pray for all victims of the coronavirus and pray for not only their health, but for the wellness of their families. Let us give God our thanks this day for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and all health care workers who strive daily to save others. In our most deepest prayers, let us pray for the abused and neglected children of our world, for all abused and neglected animals, as well as all victims of violence, both here and abroad. Let us give God our thanks and pray that all those who serve in our armed forces may be safe and return safely unto their families. In this day, let us pray for one another and for all our loved ones and all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own for the hope of salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ the day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, 
to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his heavenly Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, O Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice, an immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord, amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord, amen and grant us, your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, Bless and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching uh, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Please be seated. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give unto you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and vouchsafe to grant it peace and unity according to your holy will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. We will take the heavenly bread and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. My brothers and sisters, prior to receiving communion this day, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve your soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, preserve your soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. O oh, sacred thing, memorial of the Last Supper, which our Savior gives himself to be food for mankind. And in the deepest truth, hear our prayers this day, heaven sent, that as we receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, may be blessed. Lord, what we have received unto our lips, may we receive mentally, and may this temple gift come to us in everlasting healing. May your body, O Lord, which I have received, and your blood, which I have drunk, cling to my innermost being and grant that no sin remain in me, in whom these holy sacraments have nourished, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Can you drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <coughs> o Heavenly Father, grant that we who have been baptized into Christ and nourished by this Eucharist may rejoice as children of God and servants of all. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity, with the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God, 
These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen the glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Please be seated for a moment. This past week, we celebrated the solemnity of the epiphany of our Lord. Uh, traditionally, we bless on that day chalk, charcoal, and incense. And so the chalk, the charcoal, and the incense is available to all who would like to partake. Again, with the weather being as it is, I'm very thankful that my dear brother Wayne and my dear brother Ted were able to come this morning and to celebrate Holy Mass along with me. Let us, in our prayers, remember the living as well as the deceased, which will conclude this morning's service. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.